All right, everyone, welcome to the main event, a UFC betting show with me, Minty Betts, and always and forever, Wager Talks UFC betting expert, Kyle Anthony. Kyle, how are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. We, we have a, we've got a, a main event name. We've got a name to this. That's nice. That's yes. nice. It's, it's like official. It's like official. This feels like the main event. This feels this like. This is the main event. Yes, correct. We finally found a name that we liked. So yay, yay us. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So guys, today we'll be discussing the Tyson Fury uh, versus Deontay Wilder fight, as well as two free plays that Kyle has for UFC Auckland this Saturday night. Uh, on our first show, which was our last show, Kyle gave out two plays going 2-0, including a plus 2-10 winner on Justin Taffa. And so far this year, Kyle is a 70% winner on all plays released. Kyle, congrats. That's actually really good. Hey, it's good, but, but we got to keep it going. We got to keep it going. Like, like, like we all know, you know, you do a lot of other sports as well. It's a grind. It's a grind. Okay. So you got to keep is. going. Got to keep these winners coming in. That's right. All right. This first fight, we'll just get right into it. Uh, first, we'll talk about the highly anticipated heavyweight championship rematch happening here in my hometown of Las Vegas, Nevada, between current champion, the bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder versus the Gypsy King, Tyson Fury. Now, this is a rematch of their December 2018 controversial draw, which left fans and betters left craving more. Uh, the current line is roughly super tight. Wow, Tyson Fury at like minus 110, and Deontay Wilder, a very, very small dog of plus 115. Kyle, first, what's your initial reaction to the betting line? Because the first thing that I see is that this is so tight, it's like a pick em almost. Right, right. And, and I think it's very interesting because this is a fight where, and I had been saying this for a while, that, you know, if you like Wilder, you want to bet him. You want to bet him as soon as possible because that public money, I believe, is going to be going on Wilder. And I feel like it's a lot to do with the recency bias, for one. You're really going to see a lot of, right now, you're seeing a lot of the promos. You're seeing Wilder drop him in the 12th round, and they keep going with that. A lot of people are really pulling to that, and your casual better is going to be betting Wilder. So right. I, on my side of it, I'm looking at it saying, you know what, if you like Wilder, you're going to want to take him a couple days ago because uh, you're already seeing that the line is starting to even shift minus 110, minus 108. So you're starting to see that already. So it's definitely interesting, and also the fact that Wilder actually is the champion. He is the WBO champion, and the lineal champion is is uh, is Fury. Uh, you know, he vacated the titles once he won them. So it's interesting to see how this line's moving, and uh, you know what? Got to see where the public money is going to start to move that in or out. Yeah, right. Okay, super quick. Um, this is super random, and I should have brought it up earlier. That <laughs> weigh-in that they had was they, they were starting to fight. Like, is that for real, or is that just for, for the camera? Well, it's a, I mean, this one, I mean, it is. there's a lot on the line here. You've got two guys that are undefeated, two champions, you know, Lineal and, and the W.O., and a lot of people want to see them fight Anthony Joshua, which is going to be another mega fight, another, another big heavyweight. So it's interesting. You see that in UFC also. Like, is it real? Is it not? But I think that they're just ready to fight. So yeah. I, I think part of it, part of it could be. Right. It's like the Super Bowl, all that hype. And you're just right. like, ah, geez. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, Kyle, statistically, what are your thoughts on how they match up in the ring here? Well, I think the first thing when you look at both of them is that you're going to see how different both of them actually are. I mean, you've got Wilder on the one side, and Wilder is a heavy puncher, big knockout power. He's the kind of guy that goes forward, looks for the big shots, but uses his range. And then you've got someone like Fury on the other side where he's very unorthodox. He doesn't really just, you know, it's it's almost like he's he's shifting around his feet and still able to throw a jab from the outside, move around. And that's something that is very hard to train for. So it's not that you're going to really have a sparring partner that's going to be really be able to mimic what Fury does. So that's going to be something, I think, to begin with, that is very hard for somebody like Wilder to actually go out there and try to have somebody that he could mimic. But on the other side of it is that you've got Wilder that he is very wild with his punches off of his name, but very wild with his punches that he's able to, you know, you see him in spots where he lands a big shot and he just starts flying the haymakers out there. And it's very different for a guy like Fury, where you've got Fury that he is able to move around, the, move around the ring a little bit different than a lot of the other opponents. And the two big, I would say, the things, the kind of the knock on both of them, if there is a knock on both of them, is one, you've got Wilder, where most recently he fought Luis Ortiz. And that was a fight where you were, you know, it was almost, it felt like it was going to be, a, you know, a sacrifice. It was going to yeah. be, you know, 
Ortiz was going to get knocked out. It was going to be an easy knockout for him. But you saw it was a very close fight. And even into that seventh round, in, in most judges' eyes and most people that are watching it, Wilder was losing. He was losing possibly six rounds of the seven rounds. And it was very interesting how that was panning out. And then he landed the big bomb, ended the fight. So he was able to still get that knockout victory, but that puts up a lot of questions to is Wilder, you know, he's, he's starting to reach the, the middle, you know, middle 30s, upper 30s. Is that right. starting to change where he's at? And then you've got Fury on the other side where Fury, he's the kind of guy where, you know, what he's been, you know, recently he's had two bad, very bad um, injuries over his eye, which has, mm -hmm. has opened up multiple times. So they're oh, already saying gosh. that that could be a problem that could open up too. So there's very interesting things, I think, that come through with this. Wow. Okay. So before I ask you who you have on this, who you're betting and why, th this is, I, like I said earlier, a rematch from December 2018, and it was a draw. Wh who do you think should have won that fight then? If you remember, if not, then it's cool. The first fight, the first fight you know what? I, it was so close, and I actually did have Wilder. I did bet Wilder in that first fight. And uh -huh. after watching it and the knockdowns, there was multiple knockdowns for Wilder. I had actually Wilder when I was scoring it, Wilder winning it. But uh -huh. I mean, talk to anybody. I mean, it's, you know, you've got people having awesome. Fury winning by three rounds. You've got Wilder winning by four. So right. it's very difficult when you kind of look at it. But it was it was an amazing fight. Oh, wow. OK, so at long last, who are you betting on for this fight and why? I think one of the big things here is that you did see in that 12th round, which this is my take on it, but in that 12th round when Wilder knocked down Fury, mm -hmm. Fury somehow miraculously got up to begin with. But once he got up, he moved forward. And I think he kind of stumbled across a way to beat Wilder. Now, the big thing with Wilder is you don't want to stay on the outside. You cannot mm -hmm. stay on the outside with it because then you're going to be able to utilize his range and his big power. So in my opinion, I see that Fury is going to be going forward. I think he wants to shorten the distance so that he's unable to have Wilder utilize that power. That's going to be something I think is very important there because you know what? Yes, he's going to have that power. No, he's not going to stand there and look to just stand toe to toe, but utilizing his movement, his awkward movement, coming in for the pressure. And he has a very underrated boxing skills. He's not your traditional boxer where he moves around. So I think it's very interesting how that happens. But the big part, overall, I believe, is really going to be the adjustments that Fury can make in the fight. So not only that has he seen Wilder fight, which is, of course, going to be an advantage to him, because if you look at Wilder and all of his fights, he kind of fights the same. And not that it's a bad thing, because obviously if he's knocked out 99% of his, the guys that he's fought, but he mm -hmm. continues to fight the same way. So I think that Fury can come in with a great game plan. The odds have moved down. It was up to a minus, you know, minus 120, minus 125. It's down now to a minus 108, minus 110. I think the price is great here on mm -hmm. Fury. I think that there's a great opportunity for him to go out there, utilize his boxing, utilize his range. He's saying that he wants to knock Fury, uh, wants to knock Wilder out in the second round. I, I do not believe that at all, but I think it's a lot of mind games that are going to be coming up. But overall, I do think that Fury gets the job done, and I do like the price on him right now. Yeah, I think that's really great value for Fury. Good point. All right. Second fight we'll discuss is some MMA. This Saturday night, UFC visits the Spark Center in Auckland, New Zealand for the main event between the Irish Dragon and Paul Felder facing Dan the Hangman Hooker. Now, Dan Hooker is coming off a unanimous decision win over Al Iaquinta, giving him this main event opportunity. Uh, Paul Felder previously defeated Edson Barboza in a close split decision win. Current lines are Dan Hooker minus 156, a little high there, uh, and Paul Felder, a dog of plus 132. Now, with Dan Hooker being from New Zealand and this fight taking place there, do you factor that into your handicapping? Does home field advantage really matter here? I mean, I think it does in a way. And mm -hmm. some people really hammer that home and they're always yeah. taking the home guy and they're always thinking, I mean, yes, I think it's it, it part of your capping and it's something that you're going to look at. And sometimes even if you know it's going to be a very close fight, hey, these two are very, very, very close. And that may push you to one side over another side, but that's only if you really cap it a very, very close fight. But if obviously if you're capping it a little bit further, the, the judges are not going to matter as much. So to mm -hmm. me, I don't think that that's a full on. And we just saw recently, and we just saw recently with um, 
Jones versus Reyes, where a lot of people believe that Reyes won the fight by decision, and a lot of people believe that Jones won the fight, and that was not a home for anybody. So bad judging can be anywhere, so I, you can't put a, a full stamp on it. That's true. I suppose you're right. Um, okay, so what are your thoughts on these two guys, and what's your play? I think right now, I think, you know, you've got the line, and I, I, you know what? Both of them are, are very good fighters, and they're going to stand toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Both are going to want to strike. You've got Dan Hooker, who's got great kickboxing. Um, and the one thing that he does very well is that he's very good at his punching accuracy, and his percentages of landing punches are very high. So he's definitely able to keep his cardio up and yet still cause damage at the same time. And then you've got Paul Felder, who has very good clinch game. I mean, he's the kind of guy where he gets in tight in the clinch, he's able to frame his opponent and utilize his elbows. That's something that you've seen throughout and something that I do believe is a very, very big part in this fight. But overall, the the, the most where I, when I'm looking back and every time I place a bet, I look back at the last three fights for each fighter and I try to take something from it and seeing is someone elevating, is there something that the other opponent could expose on the one opponent? And the big thing for me here is leg kicks. This is something I think you're going to see throughout this fight. And you've seen Paul Felder be able to land leg kicks after leg kicks, chopping a lot of his opponents down. And the big thing also is that that Hooker does throw leg kicks, but he does not check them. He, he leaves out that front leg, and he likes to throw the leg kicks, but he does not check them. And that's something that Paul Felder, with his pressure, because you're going to have a little bit more of the, uh, of, of the reach on Hooker's side, but mm -hmm. Felder has shown he can beat guys with range overall. I do like that. Also, the fact over the last five years for Paul Felder, he's had nine fights, two of them he's lost, and both of them were due to injury. So he lost one where he broke his arm in the first round of a fight against Mike Curry, doing a spinning, which I don't know how you fight with a broken arm. <laughs> but he was able to get through. It was a split decision loss. So uh -huh. he did lose that fight, but he broke his arm in the first round and did finish the fight. And then actually, um, it was about seven or eight fights ago, he fought Francis uh, Francisco Trinaldo. And that was a fight where he had an injury to his eye. The fight uh -huh. just had to be stopped. So with the, all that being said, I like his cardio. I like the way he moves forward. The price is good on Paul Felder. I think that he's able to move forward on him. And also, Dan Hooker has, to my opinion, has not, every time he loses, it's against a striker that has higher striking ability than him, where he'll beat a guy like Ally Quinta, like you were saying. Ally Quinta is more of a wrestler. He's more of a wrestler. He has good boxing, but more of a wrestler. And that's why Hooker was able to take him down, able to beat him up. I think this is a spot here where Paul Felder can go out on the home soil of Dan Hooker and get the victory. I like the plus money on him. I like that. We love dogs. We love the plus money. I hope that one, I, I like that one. I'm actually going to tell you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This last fight we'll go over is a female fight between Carolina <laughs> Kovalkiewicz and Jan Shonen. Woo! <laughs> if you guys Wait. read her name, it is long, okay? <laughs> Carolina is coming off three straight losses, one being a highlight reel knockout by Jessica Andrade, while Jan is coming off three straight wins. So three straight losses versus three straight wins. Jan is favored here, minus 230. And uh, Carolina here is plus 190, kind of quite a dog. Uh, so with this being a step up in competition for Jan, how do you feel it'll affect her? Well, that's always going to be the thing where you've got a, a younger fighter that has been beating up on you know, definitely anyone in the UFC is going to be a good fighter. So it's not like there's any bums in the UFC, but they're going to be lower level fighters. Maybe they don't have as much experience. The skill set may not be there. And she has shown that she's able to do that. She's able to go for it. She's able to get some wins, some very tough wins. In her last fight against Angela Lee, which was a very tough fight for her. And Angela Lee actually has fought a lot of top fighters. And it's something that you do see that, hey, it's good experience to be in the cage against somebody like that. So mm -hmm. for me, I just think that it can change the, the, the line because you're also going to have to factor that into your capping. We're going to say, you know what, this is a step up. And you're it's almost, again, a recency bias where you're saying, hey, look, she's dominated, but now it's a step up. So that definitely, it's going to have to be in her mind that this is a totally different type of fighter compared to what she's faced. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, what are your thoughts on the line and how do you see these girls matching up? This one is a very interesting fight because you know what? This line I think is off. I think that you've got really? Jan. I think that she should be at a minus 300, minus okay. 
125. I think that the price is good, and I'm actually surprised that it hasn't been hit as hard yet because you're actually seeing it kind of stay in that same area of the minus uh, 230, minus 220, minus 240, kind of lingering around there. And I think that anything under 300 is really good. You know, Carolina yeah. is got great boxing. I do like that her kickboxing is good. Her ground game, she's very susceptible to the ground game. She has shown that she cannot get up when she's on the ground. And the pressure from Jan, I think, is going to be very important here because, again, this is a kickboxer who wants space. She's absolutely going to want the space, and I think that's something that she can absolutely expose going forward. And her heavy shots, her heavy hands is something that is very, very, I think, that she's able to expose. But also that Carolina, over her last three fights, has not won a round. She got mm -hmm. knocked out three fights ago against Jessica Andrade, and then she added up the last two fights she had. It was a sweep. Uh, 30, 27, three straight rounds for the opponent. So she has shown that she has, you know what, it, it, maybe that knockout has changed things. And, and we've seen that in the UFC where somebody gets brutally knocked out and now they don't want to feel like that anymore. They don't, they don't want to be knocked out again and they play it safe. They don't do their game plan anymore. This mm -hmm. is the kind of fighter that's going to pour on the pressure big time quickly. And I think that I don't think she's going to put her away because Jan is not one to to get the finish. But I think the overbearing volume that comes forward, I think that she gets the job done. So I think at a minus 220, minus 230, I think is a great price for her to get this victory. So you like Jan? Jan to get the win. I figured. All right. <laughs> Good. So I thought you were going to go with a heavy dog here. I was like, oh my gosh, really? <laughs> but yeah, I, I guess I like Jan too now. <laughs> We, we had what we had the last two couple of weeks, you know, right. plus hundreds, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to go with the, yes, we got to go with what makes sense here. So good stuff, Kyle. Thank you so much for all this info. Three free picks here. Um, I will certainly be telling you again this weekend. And right. everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to the main event with Minty and Kyle. Remember to give Kyle a follow on Twitter at KyleAnthonyUFC. And be yes. sure to check, yes, the two picks. Be sure to check out, he has some picks for sale on wagertalk.com. Please check it out. Remember, he went, what was it, three and one last time? Last two weeks uh, ago? Last time on the show was a three and one with a plus 200 winner. Yeah, so we, we had our first losing night of this betting season last weekend. But hey, it's all right. It's been a heck of a start. We got to keep it going. Like you said, it's a grind. Exactly. Good job, Kyle. Again, guys, check out Kyle on Twitter and his picks on wagertalk.com. The fight's this Saturday. Good luck, everyone. Ha, ha, ha.